Also, um, many thanks for coming here tonight to the English lecture on Sudan. Uh, I would very much like to thank Hamid Fadlala, who organized at very short notice for Iman Saif Sudan to come here. Um, Iman left Sudan in 2004 already and has been on her way to uh, Hanover in Germany, where she lives now, through Eritrea, Kenya, Uganda and France. And she is a mother of three and has one of her children with her now. And um, she has been um, an activist, a human rights activist, while she was in uh, Sudan and also a lecturer on environmental sciences at the Omdurman Alia University in Khartoum. And since uh, 2016 she is uh, in Hanover. She has been a women and children's <coughs> rights activist and vice president of the Pan-African Women's Organization for Central and East Africa. Um, she has been in Women Waging Peace and in International Women Peace and Dialogue. And she initiated her own NGO on an International Crimes Monitor, which monitored human rights violations and war crimes. And so she has a very good um, knowledge and overview of the situation in not only in Sudan but uh, in the whole uh, area of Africa and so I'm much looking forward to her channel. Thank you very much for having me here today. I'm very glad to 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 be in the Bluest for uh, for my first time, and uh, I hope that we can cooperate in in some other future time, whereby I I speak fully in German in German language. Uh, so excuse me for this time and. Uh, um, of course, um, there is lots of things now happening in Sudan and everybody likes to hear something and know uh, what's really going on in Sudan. Um, it's actually, um, it is the ambitions and hopes for young men and women who have been born during a total dictatorship regime that uh, drives them to uh, to go out and demonstrate and revolt the long anger and the long oppression and and dictatorship regime that has made all these young men uh, live without dreams without future and and without present uh, most of most of the young uh, men and women they are not working, they are not uh, learning, they are not educating themselves, they don't have any means and ways to live, leave it alone to other activities. And as an accumulative action of any society, the, the Sudanese people have revolted now and mass of population have um, gone out on the roads. Um, it's very, it's very different revolution. It's very unique. Um, it is very, um, it's, a, it's a lifestyle now in Sudan. The the way we are now uh, living in these uh, demonstrations since it started in December last year, and um, uh, it's unique because of it has um, a diffusive um, nature that everybody has been involved. Children, men, women, um, police officers, um, all everybody, uh, all people also, everybody have involved and everybody have participated. Uh, one of the distinguished characteristics of this revolution is that it has started in um, in peripheries. It doesn't start it in Khartoum where people are already well organized in political parties and 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 are affected by media and and, um, and dialogue with other communities uh, and i guess this is one of the circumstances that brought the success to this revolution uh, the other success is one um, is that everybody 
has agreed on the, on the leadership that's spiked by Sudanese Professionals Association, the SPA, which everybody, it makes everybody come together. Everybody was agreed on and, and the, the leadership of these organizations. Uh, that it is in nature, it is, um, it is uh, uh, technical groups or uh, associations of men and women who have been working in different places and different arenas. And, uh, and that's why everybody was saying, okay, let's give a try, it's a hope. It was the only hope for everybody that uh, after 30 years something could come true. Um, I have prepared something, a presentation on, uh, um, uh, on PowerPoint with some videos and some uh, footages that can bring the picture uh, near to you. And um, I would like uh, that after, uh, I would like this, uh, this lecture to be interactive. I welcome everybody to raise a question and I can um, happily answer all your questions as much as I can. Uh, uh, let me start with, uh, with a video that's very much touching me. People are rallying and calling for Hurria, which is freedom. All these million masses of people that reached its peak on uh, 6th of uh, April, where everybody comes into the, um, into the street and, and demonstrate it. Uh, I am going to take you in a, little, in a little chronography of Sudan, and that makes you understand why the people are revolting now and what is happening and what's going on. Uh, although um, Sudanese people have, um, have the independence, the first nation in Africa to have independence in 1956, but it's very sad to say that Sudan have never enjoyed any kind of independence, be it a social independence, because we were always linked to some other societies uh, or other wings, maybe uh, most of them like uh, Arab, uh, Arab League. Uh, we are also economically not independent because of so many factors that affect our country like changing of economic structure of Sudan since a very early stage of Sudan itself af uh, soon, after, soon after the colonial, uh, British colonial left the country. Uh, it's, um, politically also we, we have been always not free because we have always been, in a way or another, intact into other um, uh, outsiders or other um, specters of uh, um, political, political entities, not a Sudanese one. Uh, although we are different, and we are so many people, but we had a problem of a domination of the um, of one one ethnicity control the, the control the country, and that create griefs and anger. But that was not that was not the only thing. That was not the thing that has brought the anger in all um, all the community. Um, the thing is that since independence, out of uh, 64 years, we have only uh, we have out of 64 years we've left under dictatorship for 53 years, 53 years continuous dictatorship, we have been governed by military um, generals that have been ruling Sudan with a very, um, uh, with iron arm, with iron fist, that uh, people have never enjoyed what's democracy, 
uh, they have never enjoyed different ethnicities to be in, in, in power. We have never enjoyed our freedom as any other nation. And that is why it made it so difficult as a normal progress of, of development of any community. That it is, uh, it's always been interrupted by, uh, been interrupted by generals. And this, uh, on the picture, you see how many generals that have been seated in power since independence. And uh, not only, not only the the generals, but also in this intermittent period of democracies. Like one time we had a democracy but uh, it has been also violated, constitution violation happened by one political party against others, where, where the members of the uh, Communist Party have been expelled out of the parliament. Uh, that was, a, I guess, this is why we, we don't understand or we don't absorb what's called democracy in our country, even though we have uh, uh, um, elections, but we have never been enjoying a real democracy in the country. Um, um, what I can only, I want to emphasize in some points and let everybody knows and understand why is it obvious to speak out about this uh, generous or dictatorship. Um, it has been like in 1960, uh, in 1969, um, uh, we have uh, General al <coughs> which come to power, and uh, by a military coup, of course. And uh, Numeri has um, has uh, the, when it comes when it uh, the, they call it a May Revolution. And this revolution was um, left wing, uh, it has left wing um, um, type, uh, political type. This um, Numeri, during, during the, the, the rule of Numeri, which continues 25 years of dictatorship, uh, came on, to, on 1972. In 1972, uh, Al Turabi which is the, the, the person who have initiated and started the Muslim Brotherhood in Sudan. Uh, it, it was in different names, but lastly, in, in 1972, uh, he was nominated as a Minister of Justice. And when he was in the cabinet, um, he, he had done one big mistake that during this time, so in South Sudan, was uh, South Sudan was uh, ruled as an autonomy, and then uh, and then in this year it's a coincidence that in 1972 people have discovered uh, all reserves in Bantu Bantu area Bantu province which belongs to South Sudan, and then he decided to divide Sudan, South Sudan into three provinces and. Um, and in and join and join the Bantu oil rich uh, region to North Sudan, and this has started the anger in South Sudanese people, where they start to revolt and they start uh, a civil war. A serious civil war has started by the think tank was a Turabi of this civil war, and uh, furthermore, Turabi has uh, have been involved in the government in the numeric government until uh, he imposes, he changed, he changed the nature of the government uh, of the numeric time from, from being left-wing government to radical Islamic, uh, Islamic government. And this is whereby in, 19th, uh, in 1983 they um, started Sharia law in the country uh, as a radical, uh, uh, radical um, Islamic laws to be implemented in Sudan. With all, with all signs and all, um, all laws of beheading and so and so forth of brutal, um, brutal acts against civilians. But the major, the major issue was the civil war during that time, and it it was uh, widely known as jihad war, and that continues even during Al Bashir's time, and. Uh, I can say it has been it has uh, the dictatorship of Muslim Brotherhoods that control Sudan since 
um, uh, since the Turabi have been involved in power, it has been prolonged uh, for more than 37 years for himself alone. But people can never see or can never identify how Al Turabi has been controlling this country or Muslim Brotherhood uh, controlling the country, that uh, because he has never been president, but he was there with all his um, uh, his ideology, with all his money, with all other uh, terroristic organizations that came to the country from different parts of the world or Arab countries. Uh, uh, Turabi had, we have lost uh, two, two main people because of this uh, Turabi. One of them is late Dr. John Garang that have been uh, killed in an air crash. But as it, uh, everybody knows that it has been implemented or initiated also by this Muslim Brotherhood, they didn't like him to be uh, in power sharing. And the other was the, the, the thinker or the philosopher Mahmoud Muhammad Taha. He was also uh, um, um, a theorist in Islam and he is, uh, um, has his own followers, but the Muslim radicals, they have never liked him to be, to be there because he was always confronting, uh, confronting the radical Muslim brothers. Uh, so, uh, the identification of our problem make us understand better why the revolt is now happening, how, how Muslim Brotherhood controls our country and col controls also the, economic and, um, uh, the economy and the social structure of, of our community. Uh, in 1989, uh, in uh, Turabi managed to make a military coup from within, from within uh, the army because he has been recruited many of the army members into a Muslim Brotherhood organization. And uh, thus he was very successful to, um, to implement this military coup and assigned Umar al-Bashir as a president in this uh, uh, for these groups of, uh, of militants. Um, Omar al-Bashir himself was not part of, the, part of the plan itself because he had been called by the last moment that come and, and join and, and be the president. But everything was, uh, the master planner was at Turabi, have been doing all this. Uh, this is one of the, what the Muslim brothers have been doing. Uh, during um, during 30 years of Al Bashir's era, uh, lots of women have been oppressed aggressively. Uh, a lot of uh, laws that have been uh, have been imposed in the country. Um, uh, there is there is a statistics of that um, uh, one million one million four hundred lashes on women every year and a lot of money. The, the, the Minister of Justice is generating actually a lot of money of oppressing women. That's why, this is what explains why you see a lot of women in this revolution, why they revolt, why they come to the street to, uh, to join the revolution. It's because this is their last hope of coming out of this total dictatorship. Uh, lots of um, lots of um, uh, laws like a law of public order, which which uh, restrict the movement, restrict uh, restrict the, the the traveling of women, restrict so many things, uh, so many women of doing things, so many women of uh, of even working in some uh, in some uh, places. It has been seriously. Uh, um, seriously designed, although uh, Muslim Brotherhood, they like, they, they, they made a party, a political party, but they wanted this party to be uh, seen more modern party, Muslim party, more modernized, but when you look under microscope, you see all the characteristics of radical Islam and of radical organizations that have controlled uh, the countries with terrorism, with, uh, with extreme, uh, extremi uh, extremism and, and every kind of characteristics of any 
um, any um, extreme Muslim or uh, Muslim organizations. Uh, after uh, we have this, this picture is touching me so much because most of us have been tortured. Uh, have been tortured by Muslim Brotherhood, and every every woman on the roads can be stopped and can be uh, can be asked. Um, in uh, 1999, the, the 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 Muslim Brotherhood party have split it into two into two main parties. One is the the the, uh, the National Congress and the Public Congress. Uh, the National Congress, which is the party of Omar al Bashir that has continued and yet people are blaming or holding Omar Bashir and its party national congress as um, <coughs> as um, as criminals or as responsible of all crimes and jihad wars that happens but it is not the only thing the the, the public congress also holds the responsibility because of the the jihad wars that have that have killed 2 million south sudanese were done when the, this party is united and all these entities should be held responsible of all crimes that have been doing or committing together. Uh, to understand also um, to, uh, better what is going now, why revolt now, why we are revolting, it's also very much second after, <coughs> after Muslim Brotherhood or um, totalitarian regimes that has been successively ruling in Sudan, uh, it's worth also to understand the um, the economy of Sudan that has been transformed. Uh, this transformation have been uh, has a history since the uh, before the independence because the um, the colonials the colonials needed some cash crops. And they started to change the the, the agricultural systems from subs, uh, from uh, subs, um, crops of subsistence to cash crops, and this this change have also affected so much Sudan. Uh, first, it is by uh, by using lots of, uh, of land plots. Mainly, Jazeera scheme was allocated to produce cotton for Lancashire. And it has been uh, it has been sold in a very low prices that have never benefited the country. Although, and it's exhausting the land for so many years, for so long time, this process has been made. Uh, although there were a very optimistic plan of that Sudan to be a breadbasket for the Arab world, and 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 the optimistic plan was uh, is to uh, to cultivate crops in Sudan and use the modern technology and, and the money from Arab world so that we can, um, so we can uh, provide them with the needed food and um, agricultural crops. Um, it is also have been a time that in, during 50s and 60s, Sudan was among the, among the, the one of the countries that are economically uh, flourishing. Uh, because there is a lot of um, uh, production from animal um, animal wealth production and a, a lot of agricultural products, gum arabic and uh, um, cotton and, and so forth. But the stress that has been happening, it is during starting that we have discovered the oil in Pantheon, the civil war that consumes lots of money from the government, and then the failure of, uh, of developmental projects that have never been successful because they have never used a good methodology to do, to do them. From uh, environmental perspectives, when we study or revise these projects, we find that um, it has never been done um, a very uh, a good a good uh, studies before starting the developmental projects that have been uh, donated by USA in in 70s and uh, in reverse they brought about uh, or they added into desertification the problems of desertification and and and, um, and famine uh, the other thing is that Sudan also is uh, suffering from a recurrent uh, drought, uh, intermittent drought from time to time, 
And then uh, this also stresses the country so much as it has never been prepared to, to, uh, to mitigate the measure of mitigation of these uh, droughts and desertification. Uh, the, 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 the other thing is that the change of land use in Sudan, instead of people are cultivating and uh, economically uh, processing or uh, producing food, uh, there, there, there is a huge start in gold mining, and it's a, a gold rush mine. It's not, um, it's not through the government. Uh, lots of cyanide, destructive and toxic cyanides have been used that, that affected lots of water courses and um, lots of uh, uh, um, soil and, 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 the, and the people themselves. And this, the, the discovery of the gold Sudan now is, is, is competing with South Africa of producing gold, but it is also coming uh, in a question that these gold have been, um, have been uh, uh, smuggled to uh, um, United Arab Emirates that is uh, involved in, in buying more um, 450 tons from Africa have been bought by Emirates without being uh, passing through domestic, uh, uh, domestic control. Uh, and this is a very serious dilemma. And the, the, the latest report of last month came in by Reuters. Um, we have the inflation. The inflation rates lastly uh, reached spikes up to 70 percent in in Sudan. Uh, there is a, the the poverty level uh, have been um, in a very serious uh, in a very serious uh, situation. Uh, people have could never pay uh, three meals per day, and uh, it has been a tragic situation in Sudan, uh, and uh, and that with the blessings of this um, Islamic regime led by Omar Bashir, and uh, of course there is uh, wars, war in in Nuba Mountain and war in Darfur that took also lots from the from the uh, from the government budget. Uh, and that I guess <coughs> I guess this is the this is the revolution in the name of Tasud Bas. Uh, Tasud Bas it's a, it's a, it means uh, that is all just fall that is all. Uh, people have fed up they reach a point that they need to revolt. They need a change. They need to see something new. Something should be born out of this misery, because uh, there were no medications, there were no food, there is no nothing, and uh, the institutions of the countries were all collapsed. No services, no public services. Everybody has to pay. If you if you like to educate your children, you have to pay pay a lot of money, uh, and this was beyond the capacities of a normal uh, citizen in Sudan. Uh, leave it alone, having food uh, and food shortages was uh, also not declared. We had in 2016, uh, we had a failure of agricultural season and the famine have never been declared by the government um, of Sudan uh, because um, it's, a, it's politically not to, not, to, uh, not, to announce, not to announce the famine. The emergence of this uh, of Tosfut Bas revolution, people have uh, joined um, the, the Sudanese uh, Sudanese professionals associations. Was led the took the lead of the of these demonstrations. But the demonstration have started automatically. People have been revolting. They have the anger. They have all all what they need to come out on the street and cry for their freedom. Uh, the, this, these organizations, uh, it's uh, it composed of several different sub-organizations of uh, professionals like uh, uh, medicals, uh, doctors, and um, pharmacists, uh, teachers. Everybody has its own uh, um, organization or alliance or or whatever social um, group. Uh, it's hundreds of groups that have been organized automatically and they replace the, the ones that have been 
these organizations that have been initiated by the by the government of Sudan. Uh, how it works? How people join the the? I guess you are interested to know how everybody inside Sudan or out Sudan, outside Sudan involved in in this revolution. Uh, we have this. Uh, everybody, like for me, I am uh, I am uh, environmentalist. Or I, or I joined my uh, uh, my technical organization in Sudan. We have been contacting through the social media, joining, making our own groups, talking to each other, organizing where to come out on the street, what they need. We all participated. We all donated money. Uh, we donated for them to buy to to buy uh, the logistics what they need to go and make a, a peaceful revolt, and everybody was agreed to have a a peaceful revolt. That was very important because in Sudan, since ever we have a military revolt. Every every other people they join together and they 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 revolt in a way in a military way buying weapons and start fighting. But it has uh, been a failure, a failure system that have never come to a solution, not for everyone of the, of the liberation movement or for every, any other organization. So um, these people now have took the lead. They have started to work. Everybody, we, you've seen here maybe in Berlin, people have demonstrated and they carried out so many dis demonstrations in, uh, in front of the embassy or in the squares and, and, and so forth also in other European countries in America and in Australia. Uh, they have been writing to the United Nations what is going on. Everybody start to speak out. Everybody start to, uh, we decided everybody should act at your own level. You don't think about some other people far away from you, but you have to do something for Sudan. You have to participate in a way or another, or another to, make it, uh, to make it work or to make it success, successful. So um, when uh, the Sudanese um, professionals associations started to do this, so many people have, uh, it, 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 it got the acceptance of everybody. Then later, the political entities joined this, joined the, the Sudanese professional association, and they wrote a declaration of freedom and change, which is um, it's, it's a good declaration, but it's not final that so many things, so many aspects are lacking in this, in this declaration. Uh, and as it is written on the main, uh, on the page that, uh, on this decla declaration itself, that it is not final, we still have the ability to sit with everybody and negotiate and add and, and edit from what we have wrote. And that was the first, th first time we have something uh, that, is, uh, that, uh, that brings people together and give um, a good will of negotiation among the nations themselves, not with the government, not with everybody. We have decided to come together. But of course, it is not, it's not that easy, we know. It's not that smooth. It's, it's always having some obstacles and some, uh, some price uh, that we, ha we have been paying, and we are yet paying the price of our freedom. Uh, in, uh, on 11th April, uh, President uh, al-Bashir have, um, uh, have ordered the Sudanese armed force to control all, uh, all the areas. And, uh, and, and uh, because they, on this day, he wanted to control and he wanted to fight the demonstrators, but the army also have revolted that moment and joined the peaceful demonstrators and the things have shuffled in a moment that uh, they decided to say enough because mostly, I guess, it is because everybody was watching on Sudan. It, uh, it has been very brutal revolution. I didn't like to bring it here, but lots of people we have lost. In, until, until March, we have lost 60, uh, 60 uh, young men and women, and some of them are injured. Serious injuries happened. And, uh, Thousands of people have been injured and, and, and have been imprisoned also. 
uh, it was um, now, until now the people who have passed in the demonstration before yesterday it was like a hundred but for yesterday we have lost lots of people because we have one uh, um, military group which is a terrorist group that they have acted brutally against demonstrators and killed a bunch of people and throw some bodies in the river Nile uh, and they can kind of making um, uh, uh, <laughs> making um, uh, another revolt or or they are pushing people hard to accept their to accept their um, uh, their uh, their conditions because nowadays we have some sort of uh, uh, of um, negotiations going on between we had since the the fall of uh, of Omar Bashir we had a military council that took the power a military council that composed of 10 uh, 10 generals and the very sad thing is that one of the generals uh, nine of them were belonged to Sudan armed forces one of them is a militia commander or militia leader which is um, a rabbit support force militia and this militia is composed of uh, 50,000 personnel of uh, this is their this is their um, their cars and this is how they look they it's composed of 50,000 personnel it you can't imagine that in one country you have the official army is uh, 20,000 or 25,000 person and the militia itself is 50 this is abnormal position, and that's why now this militia is controlling over, over the power. This militia have been started in Darfur to combat the, um, the armed, uh, armed struggle in, in Darfur. And it is involved in, in uh, a very serious war crimes, as it is stated by Human Rights Watch. And the leader, uh, Hamdan Hamiti, he is uh, he uh, lots of uh, reports of investigations brought his name as one of the wanted and they need to uh, to investigate him and 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 have him to to go to justice um, i think this militia have have been supported by two issues one is smuggling of gold mining a lot of uh, a lot of gold mines in Darfur and smuggling it into uh, to emirates second is that this militia have recruited um, have recruited the young children uh, this militia have recruited young children here you see the uh, these are the personnel of the of the the, the uh, the rapid support forces, RSF. Uh, the RSF is recruiting children from uh, Sudan, from Chad, from Niger, from Central Africa, uh, and this is this is an organization that is similar, or it's a simulation of ISIS that is working in uh, Syria, Iraq, and the Middle East. Uh, this militia have been supported widely by Saudi Arabia and Yemen and lots of troops. Now we have 25,000 troops of Sudanese army that is in Ye fighting in Yemen and, and the money is paid to this militia leader. Uh, what we have found that this militia is paying a lot of money to the to the parents of these children, which are in sub-Saharan region from Sudan, from Darfur up to the end of Sahara, people are living under poverty and under control of Boko Haram, under control of every other uh, terroristic group in Africa. And that is why it is, it's, you know, uh, when parents uh, have seven children and they can't feed them, they just sell one out to this Hemeti, and uh, they are receiving every money uh, every month. They are receiving good, uh, good salary out of that, and so forth. Himiti also, the, the 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 leader of this organization, is receiving a lot big support from Saudi Arabia and from uh, uh, United Arab Emirates. And although Sudan is now under sanctions, under sanctions from USA. Uh, which we have um, a military ban, but 
uh, Emirates, even though Emirates have sent during the months of March 520 cars, um, four-wheel drive cars that they have been using, these cars that have been used, this has been a gift from Emirates. We, they are sending them smuggling gold and bring us what we can, when, how we can continue fight among ourselves in Africa. Uh, and and that's why and they need they need you know, it's like those people they create a, a situation that um, uh, the, the 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 military council is led by by uh, Al Burhan and Al Burhan he is the he is the the coordinator the coordinator of Yemen uh, Yemen uh, Sudanese army in Yemen. Uh, with Himiti, Himiti is the commander, chief in command of the RSF. These two people, they need to be in power to protect themselves and to continue to sustain war, first in Yemen and second in, in Africa, in, in sub-Saharan Africa. They are ready to act or they are ready to act in anywhere where they are command to do. Uh, and that's why uh, later on, we can see how it is difficult for political parties in Sudan to take power from these political entities. Both of them are wanted by reports now that we are following uh, closely. Uh, and both of them, they are criminals. Uh, Al-Burhan, in Darfur, he, he, he gave himself a name. He was working in Darfur in 2000 and to, from 2004 up to 2006, where a serious genocidal crimes have been committed. He was the military, uh, military in charge in Darfur. And he was calling himself the god of four. That is, he give life and he take life. That's, that's how brutal he was. And now, what is, uh, what is, um, a, uh, it's like now a contradiction or two way sides. While people in Khartoum, uh, on the first, uh, first days, they were very happy that they have removed al-Bashir, but the people of Darfur were very sad and were very astonished that the same dictators, the same perpetrators who killed and raped and, uh, and, and, um, and destroyed and burned our villages are now leaders in Khartoum. This is very, uh, uh, this is something that gives a very contradictive uh, insights. And I'm going to, to, to also to speak a little bit on this issue uh, because to understand how it is going or the perspective of Sudan, it, it could be never without understanding these points. Uh, the, uh, uh, those uh, Hamiti during Hamiti, Hamiti has committed uh, a rape crime. This is one of his crime, major crimes that he committed: a, a rape against women of 189 women of one village in one day, and it's reported by UNAMIT in Tabit in Darfur. And that's why when the case or when President Al Bashir, which is wanted by ICC, is handed over to ICC. For sure, Hamiti is going to be called for these uh, rape crimes that he committed in Darfur. And that's why we think it could never be easy for, uh, for political parties in Khartoum to get in power or to get democracy in the, fair, in the, in the, coming, uh, in the coming days. It's, um, uh, it is difficult, but still we have hope because People demonstrating in the road, and they are saying no military rule, civil. This is the demand of the people. This is the demand of the people who were demonstrating. They like to be, to have a civil government, but we have but because we still have these two generals in power holding the power tightly, and uh, a negotiation, as I said, it between between. Uh, uh, the declaration of, of freedom and, and change, and the military council. Both of them are, um, uh, are negotiating. The, the negotiations goes on and off, but for me, as, uh, um, as somebody who is uh, uh, watching closely to the process, what is going on, I think it's a, it was a big failure, fairest of all, 
that uh, the, that is the a group of the pol um, uh, political parties to give the right of these militants to negotiate with them or initially to, to take permission from them since they have the constitutional power from the uprise of the people who are demonstrating and they are seated outside on the roads for five months who have been killed, hundreds of them have been killed, uh, others have been injured and lots of people in Darfur. Uh, it's also uh, something very, very strange happening while the people in, in Khartoum demonstrating and have peaceful demonstrations and inc incidences of one or two people were killed in one day in therefore any demonstrations that have come out of uh, of the cities uh, more than 16 15 people shot dead and thousands hundreds get uh, get uh, injured uh, and that is this is the message of this these militants they want to send us uh, a message that you are not free you are not allowed to demonstrate you are not from therefore you are not allowed to do this. Um, I think it is, um, it's going to be difficult with this, uh, with this military council and with the nature of these two people who are already uh, criminals. Uh, we have one of them being seated in presidency for one day and the people were revolting. We were uh, crying and shouting a lot that he was among 51 names that have been uh, have been called by the ministry wanted by ministry of treasury uh, of the united states um, that was uh, ibn Auf. his name was ibn Auf, and he was uh, involved also in in uh, war crimes and violations of uh, arms embargo uh, the initial on the the last and 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 the main and the main demand of the revolting public that is on the streets they like to have civil government not less than that this is this is the initial demand but now how we could break through and having this demand happens it's very difficult. Uh, one of the one of the issue is negotiations that people are negotiating. But two days ago, this is Khartoum. Two days ago. <laughs> I didn't like to bring much of these videos, but this is what is going on in Khartoum now. And people keep uh, sending some messages that are not real and they are not uh, very well uh, passed. Uh, in the initial days of, the, of, the, uh, of this military council holding the power, some even of the of the activists were saying that okay we need some militants to control the nation and then afterwards when they see how these militants are acting how they are dealing brutally with the people they don't care they are ready to kill and this uh, this uh, this action have took place two days ago because the negotiations between the two uh, groups we're reaching a limit that uh, the, the militants want, uh, want to, um, uh, to have their, their conditions and their wishes done at the expense of these uh, demonstrating people. And they'd like to, um, uh, to remove all the people who are demonstrating in front of the army headquarters in Khartoum. There is more than uh, every day, the statistics is like it's every day, like a million of people in one place. It's a lifestyle. They are painting their pants. They are singing. They are doing everything that you can. They have uh, uh, political speeches. You, they have uh, lots of theaters there. And every every party or every activist want to speak. They, uh, people are uh, reaching out and calling for their freedom, teaching others and how 
how they want their government to be, how also the, the social fabric could heal with each other, and how to maintain, uh, to maintain a new government of, uh, uh, of, of democracy. Uh, today, uh, today the negotiation reached a level that they accepted, or it's the proposal that they are closely to agree upon, that um, uh, the 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 presidential the presidential um, council composed of ten, five of them militants and five of them uh, uh, civilians, and the 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 other the. The ministry uh, is um, is it's from different uh, political groups, and there will be some names proposals. Uh, some of the uh, wishful and I, I think very hopeful things that uh, um, some people and some rumors coming out that a woman will be at the head of the chancellery in 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 Sudan, and I hope and I wish for a woman to to come into power, this will add much on our struggle and it wars that, that it will reflect to which extent that women have been um, uprising, women have been participating fully in these demonstrations. It is most of the demonstration have started, initiated by women uh, and most of the, the calculations, it is like more than 60% of demonstrators were women. Uh, and that's why I think this reflects the very good um, uh, activism, the very good knowledge of, of their own rights and how, uh, and how they are ready to participate in, 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 um, in different ways. Uh, we have uh, the perspectives that we, we like to have is uh, first, our first demand is a civil, civil government with democracy, uh, with democracy, uh, and that ensure the participation of women. We also looking forward to have a constitutional uh, conference that we can draw out uh, constitutions that we can agree all upon that respect our rights and ethnicity and religions. Um, um, in in our perspectives, out of this struggle, out of this um, of this revolution, we'd like to see um, uh, an educational revolution in Sudan, and uh, development, sustainable development that can uh, can start a good infrastructure and and build up a new country uh, of of well-being and and good uh, um, institutions. Uh, alleviation of poverty levels, that we all suffer from poverty, although we have a good potential of natural resources uh, in our country, but it has never been used in a good way. Um, free press is one of the demands that we are having, uh, because um, since a very long time, nobody has the right to speak or to say something. And we hope to see people speak freely how they like to form their societies and their Sudan. Uh, every, um, there's lots of hopes, but I guess this is all what I have now. Um, and uh, I think I am going to stop here uh, for everybody to think and, I, uh, and it's like a brainstorming in what is going on in Sudan. Uh, I have also some pictures I will, I, will, I will show you during the discussion because it is uh, the artistic work of the revolution and uh, the, the other aspects of revolution that my, you might have uh, interest to, to see. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>